This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's the place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome aboard, folks. Dr. Charles Parker, one more time at Core Brain Journal. And we have another very interesting guest here. This is a gentleman who's been with us before. We're really pleased to have Dr. Michael Lewis back with us. Dr. Lewis has been with us on two separate previous occasions, on 171 and 224 at Core Brain Journal. In 171, we talked about brain injury and omega-3 fatty acids and CBD. On 224, we had another lengthy and interesting conversation about other aspects of testing for concussions. Dr. Lewis knows about how you can test for concussions and you can actually do it with a blood test, and that's on 224 if you want to go back to that. So today, Dr. Michael Lewis is going to talk to us about a new product, which is FDA approved for two unusual specific types of diabetes all the way down to children. This is going to be interesting, folks, because you know CBD, and that is the uh, medical form of THC marijuana. That is the medical form, and we're going to be talking about it in detail. Dr. Lewis, thanks so much for coming on board. We really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, Dr. Parker. All right, so folks, what we're going to do is have a brief word from our sponsor, and then I'll formally introduce Dr. Lewis to you. Core Brain Journal is sponsored by Great Plains Laboratory. They are deep international biomedical testing leaders for improved, targeted, Mind Science Details, it's what we're all about here at Core Brain Journal. As both laboratory and they have a very good webinar library, they're global thought leaders, they provide the most comprehensive set of hard data measurement tools for real biomedical answers beyond guesswork. And they also provide multiple training webinars for both the public and interested medical providers on how to use their data, that data, effectively in the office in any town. Check out their website for references and testing details, and and they've offered a special, really cool opportunity for people who are guests here, who are listeners at Core Brain Journal. They, every week, have a different selection on their testing, and they have a number of tests that are available that they sponsor at Great Plains. And what they do is they have a giveaway once every week. So that, and if you want to go over there and see the tests that are available, including GPL tox, oats, mycotoxins, they have a number of them. So it's over at greatplainslaboratory.com forward slash CBJ as Core Brain Journal. Why not? Really interesting. We appreciate their support in that regard. So Dr. Lewis is a very interesting guy. He is an expert on nutritional and holistic interventions for brain health particularly the use of omega-3 fatty acids for the prevention, management, and rehabilitation of concussions and TBI, traumatic brain injury. He founded the Brain Health Education and Research Institute in late 2011 upon retiring as a colonel after a distinguished 31-year career in the U.S. Army. His pioneering work in the military and since then has helped thousands of people around the world and has regularly featured in the media, including CNN's Sanjay Gupta and his show and numerous radio shows and podcasts. Dr. Lewis is a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and Tulane University School of Medicine. He's board certified and a fellow of the American Colleges of Preventive Medicine and Nutrition. He completed a postgraduate training at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, Johns Hopkins University, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, He is currently in private practice in Potomac, Maryland at BrainCare.com Center. He is, in addition, a consultant to the U.S. Army and Navy, as well as several organizations, institutes, and nutritional companies around the world. And as a founding member, this is a key point, of the Pop Warner Youth Football Medical Advisory Board. If the kids are going to play football, you might as well have some kind of idea of the medical issues involved. So, Dr. Lewis, let's get into this. This is going to be a controversial and interesting topic. In a way, it shouldn't be so controversial because of a guy who's board certified, serious medical provider as yourself is 
is into it, there must be some value to it and it must be safe. So let's talk about this specific type of CBD and the specific two types of epilepsy that they are indicated for. So let's go at it. Well, there's a great way to start. There are two really big things happening right now. And one of them, just very recently, the US FDA approved a marijuana-derived drug called Epidiolex for two specific types of epilepsy that are usually pretty resistant to a number of different medications and most always found in kids. So that's a big thing in several different directions. One is a new drug for epilepsy that has been shown through clinical trials to be effective enough that the FDA has approved it. That's one thing. The other part, of course, is the fact that it's the first drug derived from marijuana that's been approved by the FDA for anything. And so put those two together, that's, um, that's pretty big news. But the other big news that's kind of going on right now is that the U.S. Senate has passed the farm bill for this year and included in that is the Hemp Act of 2018. Now, the the House version of that uh, farm bill doesn't have the Hemp Act in it, so it's gone to reconciliation and hopefully in the near future that will come through as a bill signed by the president that basically makes all of hemp legal. And hemp, of course, being a cannabis plant as not dissimilar, but kind of like a relative, a close relative to marijuana, but without the THC in it, or only trace amounts of THC in it. So you, you know, hemp's used for food, it's used for rope, it's used for lots of things. So those two big things from the FDA and from the U.S. Uh, Congress are big news that's happening even as we talk. So does that mean that in the United States, people can grow hemp? and not be under federal prosecution possibilities? Well, right now you can in certain states, but if this farm bill goes through all the way to, into law, then the short answer is yes, absolutely. Anything mm-hmm. and everything hemp will be legal. And it's interesting because we get back to where we were 100, 200 years ago. Hemp, I think I talked about this on a previous show, hemp used to be the main cash crop in the United States, and particularly in the state of Virginia or the Commonwealth of Virginia at the time, even before we were a country, they passed a law that required all farmers to grow hemp because it was so important for ropes and sales and paper and so on. And so it was actually penalties if farmers did not grow hemp. And we're talking about farmers like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and several others. We didn't actually get that far into it, to tell you the truth. And that's quite <laughs> striking, isn't it, when you think about it? The founding fathers yeah, growing hemp. Right. And they all were required to grow hemp. Uh, it, was a, it was a huge cash crop. And so there's a big confusion, of course, because they're both the come from the cannabis plant. And so the different what's the difference between marijuana and hemp is, should sort of be the next big question. Yep. The legal definition is that hemp has to have 0.3% or less THC. So basically only trace or no amounts of THC. So you could eat consume, smoke, do whatever you want with hemp all day long, and you're not going to get high from it because it doesn't have that THC that its close cousin marijuana has. Now, does that hemp get converted to CBD? How does all that work then? Well, the hemp is, you know, cannabis in general, but, you know, certainly hemp is part of that is they're very complex. They have lots of vitamins, lots of fats, uh, omega-6 fats, omega-3 fats, terpenes, all kinds of things that are good for the body. It's sort of one of nature's superfoods. So when you harvest the hemp plant, it's grown like corn or, or and it grows like bamboo. It's harvested, planted in the spring, harvested in the fall. And the whole plant is used and all that basically pressed and all those materials extracted out from the hemp plant. So you get, and the predominant one, at least from the medicinal point of view, is CBD, the cannabidiol. So that's kind of the difference, whereas marijuana, it's cultivated and and the buds and the flowers are harvested off of the plant. For the THC, right. For the THC and the CBD, but principally for the THC. Well, that is very, very interesting because differentiating those two makes a considerable difference because one is really much more medical, medically directed. So 
How does the CBD drug effect that you're talking about here, Epidiolex, affect the brain and nervous system? How does that work? Well, what you have to understand is we have this whole, and it was discovered because of THC. So in our bodies, we have this whole cannabinoid system or our endogenous cannabinoid or endocannabinoid system. And it's there's principally two types of receptors. We're discovering more all the time, but the type 1 receptors are typically found in the brain. And it was discovered because that's what THC interacts with to make somebody high. But it turns out that we make our own endogenous THC-like substance called anandamide, and 2-acylglyceride is another one, but more being discovered all the time. But anandamide interacts with these CB run, so our body makes these. We used to call them endorphins, right? You, you got a runner's high mm -hmm. and you feel mm -hmm. really good. Well, now we know that's, in a lot of cases, or principally anandamide, interacting with these receptors in the brain to give us that feel good feeling. We also have CB2 type receptors throughout the rest of our body, principally associated with our immune system. So in the gut and our lymph glands and so on, but principally our immune system. And that helps with inflammation and keep our immune system healthy. And so the crazy thing is our body makes these chemicals by themselves. And now we're discovering that nature gives us a direct pathway to interact with these receptors as well through the cannabis plant. That is terribly interesting. Now, next question is, how in the heck does that actually involve itself, you know, in the material that you sent out here, all the way down to kids that are two years old? How does that affect the brain with epilepsy? How does it actually interfere with an a these two odd specific epileptic conditions. I mean, if they work with these two epileptic conditions, they're probably going to find a larger application and a broader and application just, uh, just, down the road. And just for general brain health, absolutely. So if you think about in basic, really basic terms of epilepsy, what's going on is that there's some overactive spots in the brain that are firing out of control, and that's basically then manifested through some physical outcome that we know as epilepsy. And so what CBD does is it calms the brain down through these cannabinoid receptors. So it calms the brain down mm. to where hopefully below the threshold to where the epilepsy is not going to start having the physical manifestations. So you can imagine if we're talking about calming the brain down enough to do that, Imagine what it'll do for somebody that's just, well, which is almost everybody, but somebody that's struggling with anxiety, for example, or difficulty focusing or just really struggling. And in my case, with my patients, I find that there's some great value with anxiety from head injuries. Yeah, we touched on that last time. Let's talk a little more about that because this particular interview may be the first time anybody's had a chance to to hear Dr. Lewis talk about these. And we started with the whole thing several episodes ago, a couple of episodes ago, as I mentioned, with brain injury. Let's talk about the application of CBD with brain injury a little bit further, if we could, because we're right there with the epilepsy, if you don't mind. Right. Well, um, so basically, through the interaction with these receptors, it's almost like, I guess the best way to try to describe it would be along the lines of SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like what, what it does is, in a similar fashion, what the CBD does is it keeps the anandamide that are endogenous cannabinoids around, it keeps them from being the reuptake of anandamide. So basically it keeps anandamide around longer at uh -huh. the synaptic junctions so that you can have a higher level of anandamide, therefore a higher level of the effects, the downstream effects of these cannabinoids, whether it's from plants or whether it's the endogenous or the interaction between the two. So, so in, in a way, it's kind of, it's like a selective anandamide reuptake inhibitor is gotcha, maybe one way to yeah. describe it. Yeah. So then the person I, I would imagine, you know, with brain injury, we see it happen so often, as you know, Dr. Lewis, I'm just 
But with injury so often, and some of the people that are coming back from the war, when they talk about PTSD, a lot of them are just plain brain injured. And when you're brain injured, what happens is you can be significantly dysregulated in motorically, emotionally, just depends on what goes on. But for example, and you know this, Dr. Lewis, but some of our listeners may not know, but it depends on which side of the head that you're hit on. So if you're looking at the brain scan and you're trying to decide what goes on, an individual's hit more on the right side of the head is a person who will be less able to really understand what's going on in conversation because that particular side of the temporal lobe really doesn't quite get what's going on when you're talking to them. And they have a different neurologic presentation on the left side of the brain. And this is germane to what we're talking about with confusion of PTSD and brain injury. The person can be very emotionally dysregulated and angry out of the box over nothing. And they're very, very hard to treat with psych meds. It's one of the reasons that Dr. Bart Billings, who has another, who runs the combat stress meeting out in California, talks about how meds don't work properly with a lot of these folks that have had uh, brain injury and PTSD because they, they actually get facilitated in a negative way based on which part of the brain is damaged. And, you know, I don't know, I'm guessing what Dr. Lewis is talking about. If you could, Dr. Lewis, talk a little bit about it. it sounds like both of those types of injuries and sequelae could be modified in a constructive way by using CBD. Well, in, in a little bit bigger, broader terms, the, our cannabinoid system, and therefore what CBD does to interact with it, our cannabinoid system affects everything that we do. It affects how we think, how we feel, and how we react on the broader terms. So then you just got down really much more on the specific terms. And so there's absolutely the ability of CBD in particular to interact and affect those things and hopefully right size those issues when somebody's had some type of a brain injury. Or, you know, as we're talking about with the epidiolex, with the hyperactive spots that are causing the epilepsy in the pediatric brains. See, that's so interesting because, folks, what Dr. Lewis was just talking about there, just to say it from a slightly different perspective, thinking, feeling, and acting are the three main brain activities. I mean, if you're talking about brain activity, those are the three main brain activities. And what Dr. Lewis is telling us is that this CBD product, which is FDA approved for two-year-old children, so I think it's going to be okay with adults can have the capacity to actually calm the brain down in even more ways than just the epileptic application. It's what it sounds like. Absolutely. So one of the questions that's going to uh, come up in people's and listeners' heads is, do I need a prescription? Can I get a prescription for this if it's only indicated for pediatric epilepsy, for example? And so, you know, when a drug has been approved, Doctors can use it off-label, number one. Number two is that's a drug that was specifically derived from marijuana, and therefore it's highly regulated. What's less regulated is when we're talking about hemp, and this is why I brought up hemp, is hemp is considered food. So something derived from food is considered a nutritional supplement. So hemp-derived CBD can be found in all 50 states and over 1,800 stores around the country online. You don't need a prescription. You don't need a medical card. You don't need to go to a dispensary. You can find it at good health food stores and holistic pharmacies. That is very interesting. I was making the assumption, and you get a kick out of this, Dr. Lewis, because you know we're both physicians and we're going to think from a physician perspective that it would have to be a prescription and I was going to ask you about that, what their schedule was and whether you have to write a prescription. But what you're saying is this particular product doesn't even require a prescription. Is that correct? Well, if it's derived from hemp. Now, this particular FDA-approved pharmaceutical drug, and you bring up an interesting point. I've not actually seen it's so brand new approved. I'm not sure how they have it scheduled, if it's a schedule two, three, four, or not even scheduled. So I'm not sure that that's been clarified. I haven't actually seen that published. So that, mm -hmm. that brings up an interesting thing to keep an eye out for. 
Well, it's great. I mean, it's fun being out on the frontier here of what's going on because the issue is these kind of conversations, Dr. Lewis, bring a lot of hope to a lot of people because the whole issue of what's going on with the evolution of brain science is dramatically applicable in so many people's lives. This is a, this is not a casual conversation between two guys on a very odd singular problem, but we're talking, we started with this conversation several months ago talking about brain injury. I mean, brain injury is in epidemic proportions. These two odd, I say odd because I, I don't even know what type they are, the very specific types of uh, child epilepsy, not my skill set. But the fact is there's a very broad application that we're talking about from brain injury to epilepsy. And the fact that it might be available in, in well, however it's available, it's going to be interesting. And it might be more available in, in uh, various modalities and various sources. So we'll just have to keep our ears tuned. And, and, and Dr. Lewis, we're going to make sure we invite you back when, when we find out the answer to that question. So let me ask you another question. So how did it actually work with these kids? It, it actually reduced the frequency of seizures in patients with these two syndromes? Is that what actually happened? Well, my understanding, and I'm not a neurologist, I'm not a pediatric neurologist for sure, but my understanding is that it can dramatically decrease the number of seizures or even eliminate them, hopefully, but certainly we'll just keep it at can significantly decrease the number of seizures. But I also understand it decreases the intensity of the seizures themselves as well. Well, that is very interesting. Now, let me ask you, did they talk anything about the side effects? I mean, is this something a person, how do you, with children and being a child psychiatrist, I know we're always very, very careful about dosing strategies, but even after careful dosing, are there any side effects uh, to your knowledge about this these, with these medications? That's one of the neat things about CBD is there are no known side effects. It is processed through the P450 enzyme system in the liver. So there may be some interactions with certain types of drugs. But as far as we know so far, it doesn't mean that there aren't any, but there are no significant side effects like you get from pharmaceuticals. Now, some people, it might make them sleepy. Some people, it might keep them awake. But for the most part, the, all the side effects, if you want to call them that, are good. I mean, it usually helps people sleep better, helps them be calmer. Are they benefits? Or are they side effects? I mean, so that's what you have to really consider. That is really pretty amazing, to tell you the truth, that you have some discovery like that, and people are really actually, what happens so often, and some of your listeners don't know this, but the whole thing of setting up clinical trials on a situation like this with children is very challenging. And I'm sure the company went through many, many safety measures to figure out what was going on, if they're going to actually try this on real children. And I think it's, it's interesting. Well, and as you know, in some, a lot of cases, the idea of uh, when you're doing a clinical trial, every little thing is considered a side effect. So if a kid has diarrhea, for example, that gets listed as a side effect and so on. So I'm sure the list of side effects is probably just as extensive as many other yeah. drugs. But right. as far as realistic side effects from CBD, it's, it's pretty innocuous. Well, Dr. Lewis, I have a question for you. We're going to take a little break right here, but I'm going to tease this with a question that I'm going to ask you when we get back because we've talked about kids, but let's take a moment when we get back to investigate further your experience of your direct experience with individuals who've had brain injury, uh, talking back to the adult point with the CBD and what you've actually witnessed because you've had some clinical work with it and what was the product that you used and Tell us a little more about that. We'll be back, folks, in just a minute with that question. Today, the world of mind science, psychiatry, and mental health is rapidly changing with innovative, comprehensive testing that takes both patients and practitioners into a new world of measured details with useful, understandable, and remarkably actionable plans. The key phrase here is cost-effective. Testing also introduces a key parallel word, predictability. Psychiatric treatment failure, especially after multiple medications and our brief hospitalizations, arises directly from the complexity of measurable brain-body imbalances and impediments that explicitly interfere with medical outcomes 
and create costly difficulties with inadequately informed supplement and medication trials over time. Great Plains provides a leadership team of biomedical experts with advanced laboratory insights approved nationally both by the FDA and CLIA laboratory certifications and is available internationally for both public and medical professions. Great Plains Laboratory is the primary laboratory we've used at CoreSight for years with excellent customer service for both patients and medical colleagues. They are on the spot, they get it every time. In addition, they provide exemplary training modules, which are webinars and conferences, in an effort to broaden practice perspectives wherever you live. Do follow up on one of these complimentary test offers today at http greatplainslaboratory.com forward slash cbj yeah that's core brain journal cbj well folks we're back with dr michael lewis he's an md he's a master of public health mba he's certified board certified in two different groups and he is telling us about cbd a new product and the question i was asking about we were starting to talk about that particular product as it relates to some epileptic disorders with children, which is news in itself. But the question I was going to ask him more was to go back to the adult point of view, since we're talking about CBD as it relates to brain function generally, and the whole issue of what was your experience, Dr. Lewis, in treating people with brain injury? You know, we talked a little bit about it, but if we could talk a little more about that and understand that a little more. I think there's some people out there that would love to hear what your perspective is on that question. Well, I wouldn't wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't have, if I didn't use it and have great experiences uh, with it. It's been, um, in many cases, I have patients come back to me and say that it is absolutely life-changing. And there are not many times when you advise a patient to try a nutritional supplement and they come back and tell you it's life-changing. They typically will say, you know, hey, the fish oil is great, but the CBD has been life-changing. It's helped them get better focus. They're calmer. Their brain fog is lessened, even on top of what they're getting from the fish oil. So it's almost what I've found clinically with my patients is the combination of the two, of fish oil and the CBD, has been a game changer on how much it's helping my head injury patients who continue to suffer with energy issues, brain fog concentration problems, focus problems. And so it really has a major effect on all of those. So Dr. Lewis, let's take our magnifying glass and go into this a little bit more because I do remember and how interesting it was when we talked before about the dosages of omega-3 fatty acids because I think that's one and what type of omega-3 fatty acids because there's a variety there. And then we'd also like to hear about your dosage patterns with CBD And did you have a specific product that you used? If we could talk about, that's a lot of questions all in one question, but I'm (laughs) sure a number of people would be interested. So let's start with the omega-3 fatty acids, the dosage, and uh, specific types of omega-3s with that. And then I'll ask you the other one after we get done. Well, when we're talking about omega-3s, we want the longer chain omega-3s, the ones that make up the foundation of the brain. And so if you throw out initials, EPA and DHA, DHA is the one that's uh, really part of the structure, about 30% of the fat in the brain, actually. So that's a really important one. And you don't get that from, say, flaxseed oil or spinach or dark leafy green vegetables. You need it from animal fat. In particular, some of the most concentrated sources are things like uh, Pacific Northwest salmon and sardines and anchovies. But you can also get it from fish oil supplements. And I start start with a loading dose over one week to even one month of a loading dose. And so I go probably about nine times higher than most people would think. So I go with 9,000 milligrams of the amount of combined EPA and DHA. And I do that for at least a week, if not a month. And then I get down to what the FDA tells us is generally recognized as safe levels of 3,000 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA. 
So I look at that as also a prophylactic type of thing. If your kid is playing high school football, for example, like my son did, I made sure he took 3,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA every single day before he left the house. So do you do that, Dr. Lewis, in um, uh, divided doses, or can he take three before he hits the sack? How does that work? Usually, you know, it's always easier just three just before part of breakfast, before they leave the house in the morning, because mm-hmm. getting a second or a third dose into people, let alone kids, is yeah. not always the easiest. So uh, yeah. and we're talking about that. So over time, it you know, it's going to accumulate. It's not like, uh, say, vitamin C that you're just going to come out in your urine if you have too much. So it does accumulate. And part of the reason why I do a higher dose is we know that it typically takes about 12 weeks to kind of reach a saturation level at kind of regular dosing, like a 1,000 milligrams a day. Well, if you had a head injury or you're trying to address a brain health issue, who wants to wait 12 weeks, three months? So we know using higher doses shortens that period of saturation. And so that's why I call it a loading dose to really get those levels up as quickly as possible. And, uh, and with the side effect that people notice sometimes within a day or two that they're thinking clearer, they have more energy and life is just better. So interesting. Okay, let's jump over and ask this question. Then this is the other one that I was mixing up with the previous one, and that is what type, did you have a particular brand of CBD oil for the CBD treatment regarding brain injury? Did you have a brand, a product, and then what were the doses that you used there? Well, uh, let me just say from a fish oil standpoint, you get what you pay for. So if you go to a big box store or a a big chain pharmacy company, they're probably going to have really cheap fish oil, and you're going to, you're going to, be inclined to want to not pay so much for it. But the best fish oils are more expensive because they just are better. And so really look at the top three or four brands and products out there. And that's where the quality is. And in some cases, uh, companies like Nordic Naturals, they've been the leader in the market of fish oil for over 20 years. In CBD nutritional supplement industry, there's really two clear leaders out there. CW Pharmaceuticals, or CW, let's see if I got that straight, uh, Charlotte's Web. See, so I'll just leave it at Charlotte's Web. It's by the Stanley Brothers. That's the one that's been kind of the most well-known. And plus CBD oil by CV Sciences. Those two companies, so the plus CBD oil and the Charlotte's Web are the two biggest ones by far. The number three, four, five are way down the line. So I tend to go with the market leaders because they're leading the market for a reason. And the quality is better. Of those two, I like plus CBD oil better because that comes not, Charlotte's Web is only available in liquid. I like plus CBD oil in gel capsules. So the size of a small vitamin D capsule makes it really convenient, really easy to dose my patients with. So then what is the actual dose, Dr. Lewis, on that? Do you give them, how does it come in milligrams? Is it a thousand milligrams a day, a hundred milligrams? How does all that work? So for example, I think in the process of being published, so I can talk about this and the plus CBD oil brand is the first brand of CBD that has reached out to the FDA and has obtained a generally recognized as safe level. So they've got all their products tied around that level, which is actually like 17 and a half milligrams. So all their products are start at least like the soft gels at 15 milligrams. And so not all of it's absorbed because of the digestive enzymes, but it's enough to make a big difference. So it's measured in milligrams and a lot of times, it's the opposite of fish oil. Sometimes smaller amounts are actually better. And so sometimes I have to go, I start with a 15 milligram soft gel, but I have to go down to the liquid, like to drops to get down to two or three milligrams because sometimes patients, they respond better actually to less amount of CBD, kind of the opposite of fish oil. It was a hard lesson for me to learn as a clinician. That's very interesting. Well, then, Apropos of the drops, do they actual, do you actually encourage a person to cut the capsules and get a dropper and do that with a specific measurement of drops? Or how does, how does all that, well, how, if, what are the mechanics? If they, find, if they find the drops are 
too much for them or they just don't like how it makes them feel, then I encourage them to try the drops instead. But well, they actually in a come very as drops. large I'm sorry? They do come as drops then. So I didn't realize they that. Do, they do, right. No, they do come as, as drops or, or even sprays. And so um, I encourage the patients then. Uh, but I find most people do really well on a 15 milligram gel capsule. I tell them to take it. Every patient's different. That It's really individualized. So every patient's different. What your dose is might be different than my dose. And yep. so yep. I start people at one soft gel I say take it, try it in the morning and try it at night. If you're having, if your brain won't shut off at night and you have trouble sleeping, the CBD can really help with that a tremendous amount. So um, you may find it's helpful to sleep, but you also may find that if you take it in the morning, it just makes your day go smoother. And other people, it makes them, there might be some sleepiness. And so they don't want to take it that day. So it's you really have to be very individualized in your uh, approach to it. Very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. That's that's terribly interesting. It really is. And I mean, that, I, a lot of people are going to be very pleased that you've shared that information because you know you think about what's going on out there. And and I'm just speaking on a personal level. I can think of people I'm seeing right now that we could get get cooking and get this thing going down the road, make it happen so they feel better. That's great. When I was saying offline before we started, we've used the uh, the omega-3 suggestions uh, successfully. And uh, I don't see as many people with brain injury as, as perhaps you do, but I, but I know we've had some good success with it. I think the CBD oil would be something to uh, complement what we're already doing. It sounds, sounds very interesting. Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications like those written for ADHD are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.